Hey guys, we just turned up here at the uh, Active Health Clinic at Hong Kong University. We're going to meet Glenn Joe, who's an exercise physiologist here. And we're going to be talking about DEXA scan technology, trying to find out what body composition is, what makes up fat mass, what makes up muscle mass, you know, how they're different, what kind of testing types there are to actually test body composition, how they uh, vary, and uh, getting some insight into DEXA scan technology. So see us in a second. Hey guys, I'm out here at the Active Health Clinic at Hong Kong University with Glenn Joe, who's a senior exercise physiologist here. And we were talking about DEXA scan technology and body composition. So Glenn, thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, can you explain for us what body composition is? I guess body composition basically is the, the measure of your body. So, you know, typically um, from a health or fitness point of view, it's looking at your, your bone density, which is obviously really important. Uh, your muscle mass and your fat mass. Okay, and why is it important for us to understand what body composition is? Yes, typically, you know, um, height and weight is a, a typical measure that most people use. It's really easy to do, but uh, essentially it's not telling the full picture, of course. You know, you look at your total weight um, and perhaps you're changing your nutrition, you're changing your exercise habits, um, and the weight doesn't change that much, but perhaps um, the muscle is going up, the mm -hmm. fat is going down, is typically what we want to see. Um, so obviously with height and weight, you're not essentially going to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas with um, a DEXA scan like this one, you, you certainly will see a lot more detail. Sure. So that's the, the BMI that we're talking about, which is a very sort of old way of testing stuff for height and weight. In which case, I'd be obese and not allowed to join any government <laughs> services. Yeah. And obviously guys, we've got some great visual props here as well in terms of you know what body fat and muscle mass look like. This is... One pound. Of one pound of fat. Right, and that five is pounds. five pounds of fat. So if you lost five pounds of fat, that is a whole lot of cheese off the muffin tops. And so we talked about you know what a, 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 why body composition is important, what body composition is. So what are the different ways we can actually measure body composition? You know, I guess typically, like we said, you know, height and weight is the simplest one to do because um, everyone knows kind of their height, and you know, scales are very easy to come by in terms of your weight. Um, skin folds uh, are typically one that uh, a lot of facilities will do and um, they're great if the person that's doing it is a very experienced uh, technician I guess. But even if in a very experienced technician there's going to be some human error of course. Um, but those are uh, typically the ones that uh, you know most people will begin with and then the, there's the, the BIA scales, the bioelectrical impedance analysis. Um, so you either stand on a scale with your bare feet and you're holding on to some kind of handles or with just your bare feet. Um, and basically it's looking at how hydrated you are. So, you know, there's a signal that's getting passed through your body. Um, and of course your muscle has more water uh, than fat. So as it's going through, it's looking to the resistance to that flow. But as you can imagine, if you're more or less dehydrated, that's going to fluctuate throughout the day. So there are some obviously inaccuracies with that one there. Um, and then the DEXA is the next one, and then essentially um, it's a very low density x-ray, so the amount of radiation is, say for example, you get a dental x-ray 30 times less than a dental x-ray. If you fly long haul, um, 20 times less than the amount of radiation you get when you fly. Um, and then it's looking at um, the different density of, of the tissue, so basically your bone, your fat and your muscle, because it has those different densities, so the x-ray is going to show that to see which, uh, I guess, parts of the body are, are, are more or less. Mm -hmm. So that's great, so we're talking about skin folds, obviously there's a lot of human error, or potential for human error on the skin folds, and also different types of body fat. So if we've got the adipose tissue versus visceral body fat, which is gonna come out from around the internal organs and mobilize, it can be a little bit tricky. We've got bioimpedance, and there's certain types of technology with the bioimpedance, and that's what gets very relevant in a place like Hong Kong. Uh, a lot of the big commercial chains have got these bioimpedance machines. Um, I guess one of the downsides there is there's a bit of fluctuation based on hydration levels. Is there? A, do you see a lot of discrepancy amongst different brands of machines from a, a low level scale? For example, you buy at a, at a, at a supermarket or a Japan home. Versus yeah, absolutely. You know, um, even within the same brand, um, there can be you know quite a big difference. Um, so certainly, you know. Basically, the machine is again looking for that resistance to the flow, and then it's got an algorithm within that within that little computer. So it's going to tell you you've set your height, you set your weight, um, and then it's doing the the impedance analysis, and then it's got an algorithm to spit out that percentage. So all the different machines are going to have different algorithms. All the different machines, obviously, some are just using handles, uh, some are just using your feet, some are using your hands and your feet. So 
there's always going to be lots of lots and lots of differences in between those ones as well. Right, right. Okay, great. So, depth of scan, from your point of view, is is the gold standard. Can you tell us a little bit more about the actual process? So what's involved in getting a DEXA scan? Sure. Done? So basically, um, um, on this table here, you're basically just going to lie down on this table for, for around about six or seven minutes, and you stay as still as you can. So again, there is um, a detector in the bottom, and then there's a, a beam that goes to the top. So the table is obviously going to just move around very, very, very slowly, um, and then it's, it's going to scan your whole body, and then it's going to obviously look at the different densities in the different tissue. So essentially, you're just lying down for six minutes, um, and you don't have to do anything. You, you make, basically just make sure that you um, have no zips or buttons or anything like that. So shorts and a t-shirt and stuff like that. There's no real requirements for when you eat or when you shouldn't eat. Um, so any time during the day um, and uh, essentially coming in and, and doing it for six minutes and then a quick analysis and discussion about it, you're in and out in 30 minutes. And will the cellular hydration from a bioimpedance have the same effect? So using that technology of, of the bioimpedance, have the same effect in a DEXA scan? Is that relevant? With the um, scan? Probably, probably less. Certainly, there's there's going to be some um, minor minor fluctuations, you know, in terms of the accuracy. But you know, in terms of the overall difference, it's probably pretty insignificant. So certainly, on the scales, the BIA scales, if you're again more or less dehydrated, it's going to fluctuate quite a lot. Whereas this one uh, should be really pretty accurate. That's because the X-rays are actually hitting different, you know, types of mass as, as opposed to just measuring the hydration yep. levels. And using the algorithm. Exactly, yeah. Great. So if someone's coming in for the first time and getting a DEXA scan done, do you see a, a, a difference in the result that they see versus what they might have thought they were at? So their body fat percentage, DEXA's telling them one thing, and they have come from a bioimpedance or a skin fault or yeah. some other way of measuring that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to be honest, most people's first reaction when they see the result is, well, that's a lot more than I thought. You know, and, and typically it's mainly because I guess in, in the mass media you know, people talk about their, their body fat percentage and their, their single digits, their five percent, their eight percent, females maybe ten, fifteen percent, and they may well be if they've perhaps done skin folds or the BIA analysis or whatever they have, but for the DEXA scan certainly, um, for example, the guys that we normally see usually between twenty and thirty percent. So a guy that is um, kind of below twenty, that that's already pretty decent don't often see ding, single digits for guys and then for girls typically 30 to 40 percent is what we normally see um, and then again for, for females you know 25 to 30 that's actually pretty lean already yeah. don't often see below 20 percent for the DEXA so um, I guess it's just um, you know in terms of that that figure that people have in their head they're, they're used to seeing those numbers because of skin folds and because of the BIA analysis and um, that's a, it's, it's not a new um, analysis machine but um, it's certainly being used more for body composition when it was used you know it was designed for bone density basically right I think that's a really, really important to make, point to make because uh, a lot of people especially when we've all got access to the internet you know it's very easy to get these um, ad hoc bits of information and influence and so you know for women if, if they're following someone an influencer or an educator and they're being told this is what 18% body fat mm -hmm. looks like as you said for a woman to be sub 20 you know she's in shape yeah. really you know quite lean for a woman to be under 15 is unless her competitive sort of physique or a bikini athlete but that's that's the thing is almost yeah. absolutely of. yeah and you know th there's been a couple of times for females especially we've seen them below 20 and um i i would like to say probably a little bit unhealthy to be that low as well right. um so certainly there are you know upper ranges you know you don't want to have too much body fat but there's certainly lower ranges as well you don't want to have not enough body fat as well so right. It's, it's certainly an, an important tissue to have, um, yeah. and obviously a certain healthy range is probably important. Yeah, uh, the lowest dex I've ever, I've ever got was 6.1%, uh, but I was close to death to get, to get there. <laughs> yeah. um, I was very gaunt. Um, <laughs> yet, you see stuff online all the time, mm. of course, people saying I'm 8% body fat, yeah, yeah. so no, we look like nothing alike. So sure, yeah. um, it's good just to know that we're, we're talking simply about numbers here, and the number is almost irrelevant, and as Glenn's educated us on, what we want is whether it's at, whether we think that we're 15 percent or 25 percent, 55 percent. We want the best, most predictable technology to track what kind of interventions and changes we're going to make, so that we can actually have something valid to compare it against. Yeah. And so, with that in mind, how frequently can we actually come and get a DEXA scan done? You know, essentially, in terms of um, the amount of radiation that you get from it, you could you could have one every day. It's no problem. But um, you know, typically we say eight to 12 weeks. Um, certainly you can come in um, shorter than that if you wanted to, four weeks or six weeks. Um, the change perhaps will, will not be as, as 
as significant. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you know, eight to 12 weeks is a more perhaps manageable time um, in terms of seeing a change. And then also goal setting as well. Perhaps you know, if you say six months, then maybe it's a, a perhaps a little bit longer in terms of setting those goals. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really up to the individual. Um, but certainly, we say maybe around eight to twelve weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you often surprised by people whose weight on the scale, their molecular weight, might not have shifted too much, but they actually walk away quite surprised at what might have actually happened? You know, ox, you know, losing this and building this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think a lot of them that come in the first time. Um, or they do come back and they're like, well, the, the weight's not really shifting that much. And they, they perhaps get a little bit disheartened with the program, whether it's nutrition or exercise. Um, but then when they do the scan and they can actually see, wow, well, okay, we've, we've decreased fat mass by, let's say, 2.5 kilos. We've increased our muscle mass by maybe two kilos. So the net effect is on the scales is you're only changed half a kilo. Mm. But actually, when you look at the body fat percentage, because of those changes, in the, the, the fat mass and the muscle mass, the percentage has actually changed quite a lot, even though the, the total weight hasn't changed that much. Mm. That's a really, really important point, because a lot, I think one of the big sort of misunderstandings is that somehow we can sort of turn this into this, or turn this into this, and they're, they're diametrically opposed. It's not completely untrue in that this can be the fuel to build this, but essentially we've got very, very different, you know, uh, uh, structures within the body, and uh, uh, the body fat is essentially the fuel. So if we've lost the fuel, we've been absorbing extra calories and we've actually been expending, and we've built more metabolically active tissue with the muscle mass, it means that our caloric requirements are now a little bit higher, which will hopefully avoid us building too much of this in the future again. So uh, we can come in sort of as our little checkpoints along the way. How do we get in touch? with you and to get a DEXA scan booked in? Yeah, essentially um, directly emailing me if you like, but um, certainly just go online, Google Active Health Clinic, um, Hong Kong perhaps, or Body Composition Hong Kong, and you'll probably come up with um, a Google search um, and then just make contact, send us an email, um, and then we'll find a 30 minute window for you to do it. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And then, you, you know, once you've got your baseline, I think, um, you know, working towards those goals, um, and then having, I guess, a, an objective measure of those results. They're probably gonna feel different, um, but um, at least you can quantify those results as well, which are really interesting. Mm -hmm. What's one of the most sort of profound changes you've seen in your time here in terms of like either body fat loss or a muscle gain? Yeah, I think um, certainly everyone loves a big change, yeah. but certainly the, the smaller changes are, are a lot more sustainable. But certainly, um, you know, we've seen people go from um, 35 percent down to 25 percent but you know everyone's so different um, but I think body composition aside certainly um, you know seeing those changes are really interesting but also just seeing you know the difference when they come in you know yeah. certainly the body composition is one thing but you know uh, psychologically physically you know absolutely. there's so many changes that you see in, in, in them and then you know I only see them for 30 minutes but you can absolutely tell a difference you know when they made that difference um, lifestyle change and then, then making just positive steps in their, their lifestyle basically. Awesome. Well thank you so much for your time Glenn. No uh, thank you for teaching us about DEXA scan and uh, there you go guys um, you can come here to the Active Health Clinic at Hong Kong University if you're watching this outside of Hong Kong you'll find that in most capital cities around the world they will have access to a DEXA scan it might be at a hospital or a sports performance clinic um, so look up DEXA scan which either be spelled D-E-X-A or D-X-A depending on how they've abbreviated it dual energy extra absorption. Glenn, thank you so much, mate. No problem. All right, great. Thanks, guys.